Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about closeness centrality. We already made a video on it, but there were queries to be more elaborative on evaluating these values. So this time we are going to spend more time on evaluations. Let's just get started. You'll be calculating closeness centrality and it's basically an evaluation of how close a node is to all the other nodes of the same network. If the value is high, that means a node is positioned well and is at a shorter distance to most of the other nodes. It's going to give us positive values where a high value is preferred, which means that a node is closer to most of the other nodes. Now let's just consider a graph for an example. So let's say we have nodes A, B, C, D, and E and we have some edges between these nodes. The network is undirected so we have this graph or network and we would like to find the closeness centrality of nodes. Now before we continue we need to understand that there are basically two formulations for closeness centrality. If we consider the raw formulation the closeness centrality of a node i is equal to 1 over summation, let's j is from 1 to n, distances of node j from the reference node i. So if we are calculating it for node a, we have to calculate the distances of a to all the other nodes and add them up in the denominator. Now as you can see, this is the raw formulation and it does not consider the network size. So if you are calculating closeness centrality for different nodes of the same network, it's not going to make any difference. However, if you are comparing the closest centrality of two nodes in two different networks, in that case, it may not be a good comparison because we are not considering the size of a network. So the normalized closeness centrality formula is going to be closeness centrality of a node i is equal to n minus 1 summation j is from 1 to n distance of i to j so in this case again we'll have to iterate through all the other nodes from 1 to n and find their distances with the reference node i but this time we have n that represents the total number of nodes in the network. So the value of n is going to represent the size of the network and now if we consider two values across two different networks we will get a better comparison. Let's just calculate these values and we'll be in a better position to understand them. So if we use the raw formula first so the closeness centrality for node A is going to be 1 over the distance of A to B is 1 plus the distance of A to C and D is 2 each, so it's 2 plus 2, plus the distance from A to E is 3. So it's going to be 1 over 8. So 8 is the sum of distances of all the nodes to the node A. Again, as we said, we are not considering the size of the network, the formula hasn't got anything to represent the size of the network, so we do not know how good this value is. In other words, it's not normalized. If we calculate the closest centrality for another node, let's say D, so the closest centrality is going to be 1 over D is at a distance of 1 from the nodes B, E and C, so that is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1, and it's at a distance of 2 from the node A. So that is going to give us a value of 1 by 5. So obviously it's a higher value. So D is having high closeness centrality as compared to A and therefore D is in a better position or in a better location in the network as compared to A. But again, as we said, we do not know how good this value is across two different networks. Now if we have to calculate the same values using normalized closeness centrality formula, so in that case we will have to consider the size of the network also. So the closeness centrality of node A is going to be 
n minus 1 divided by 8 because we have already calculated this part and n is 4 1 2 3 4 5 we have a total of 5 nodes 5 minus 1 is going to give us 4 so that is going to be 4 by 8 4 by 8 which is 0 0.5 if we have to calculate closing centrality for the node D, it's going to be 4 divided by 5, which is going to be 0 0.8. So now these values are making more sense. Now if we consider another hypothetical network in which there are 6 nodes, so the closing centrality of node A in that case, let's say it has total of distances from all the other nodes is 8, but instead of 5, that network has got 6 nodes, so it's going to be 5 by 8 and 5 by 8 is going to be a value higher than 4 by 8 which means that having sum of all distances that is 8 is better in a network that has got 6 nodes than in a network that has got 5 nodes so this way the size of the network is also considered in calculating the closeness centrality now we have calculated all these values for an undirected graph however in case if the graph is a directed one so the mechanism is going to remain the same however we'll have to calculate the distances based on the directions so for example if we have directions so you'll just redraw the same graph and this time we'll add some directions to it so we have a b c d e so this is the network that we have got and this time we have got some directions also right so we have added we have added some directions to this graph and now if we calculate the closeness centrality of a node let's say a uh, considering the graph to be a directed one it's going to be 1 over the distance of a to b is again 1 the distance of a to d is 2 this time we'll have to consider the directed edges the distance from a to d is uh, sorry a to c is 2 and the distance of a to e is 3 so we are getting the same value which is 1 over 8 in case of raw formulation for closeness centrality when the graph is directed if we calculate it for the node d it's going to be 1 over the distance of e to d is 1 oh we haven't got directions for these two edges so let's say this one is directed this way and this one is directed this words so the distance from d to e is 1 the distance from d to c is again 1 the distance from d to b is actually not reachable because there is no way we can get from d to b so that is basically infinity if you do not have a path from D to B, that means it's not reachable or the distance between the two is infinity. But since in computations we cannot use infinity, so we are going to assign a very big value. So we will say that if two nodes are not reachable, so we are going to assign a cost of 100 to it or some very big value. So, which means that even if it is reachable, it's very costly and we may not consider that option. So the distance from D to B is 100 and again the distance from D to A is also 100. So this is going to give us a value of 1 over 202. So this would be the centrality or the closeness centrality of the node D. If we calculate it, let's say for the node C and this time we use the normalized formula so the closeness centrality of the node C using the normalized formula is going to be so we'll just use an R with it so this is the raw one and this is the normalized one it's going to be n minus 1 divided by all the distances that we have from C to all the other nodes so from C we can get to E in one step from C we can get to uh, in fact from C we cannot get to any of the other three nodes so therefore it's going to be 100 plus 100 plus 100. So this is going to give us a value of n is 5. So 4 divided by 301. So that's how we can calculate the closeness centrality 
using raw formula or normalized formula for directed and undirected graphs. Thanks for listening.